Welcome. Let's take a look at what's happening at Hollywood Boots uh, Durbanville. We take a look at race number five on the card. So it is a jackpot. Darren Burrows is with us, and he'll give us an idea as to what he's worked out. Darren, I mean, already just looking at the market, they've got 11 to 2 the whole field in a race like this, where Fair Advantage is top of the board at 11 to 2. Number 10, Prevalence is trading almost the same price. One double Olympic is trading at 11 to 2. So three way favoritism in a race here, in this race. And number seven, Rule of Thumb at 17 to 2. They bet 10 to 1 and better about the others. It's a class four race. It's, it is over 1,600 meters. When we did the show on Friday, full field, well, a field of 15 horses that will be lining up here. But I don't know. It does look to be very, very challenging, difficult race, not easy. So let me go straight to uh, Darren. I mean, this horse has only had one start double Olympic. I just want to ask you about it. Uh, Louis McCott was riding for Brett Crawford. One start, one win. And the form line actually hasn't been too bad. But I don't know if it's strong enough or good enough for a race like this. What do you make of the race? Uh, Clyde, not for me uh, right now because he won in the heavy conditions first time out back in June. Now, I made this race between two runners. I know the betting doesn't suggest so, but this horse, Rule of Thumb, had a massive injury. They weren't sure if he would make the races uh, ever again, and he's come back with a bang. 25 to 1, he won his penultimate start in good style. Last time out, they still offered 8 to 1 about this horse, and I couldn't believe the price because he looked the right horse on form. He won. Once again, they're pricing him up at 8 to 1. He's achieved a much higher mark as a three-year-old, and he's on the right track. So Craig Bantam rides him all the time. I think this is the horse to beat. I make the danger prevalence because he recently was gulded. He's had the two comeback runs, and last time out, he absolutely took off late. He's drawn a bit deep, but he'll be flying home. So rule of thumb over prevalence. There's value in both their prices. Okay, so those are the two, and they're both Justin Snaith horses. Seven and ten in terms of Darren's analysis. That's the way he sees it. Good. When you can try and, you know, narrow it down in what appears to be a competitive race to just two runners, well, that's, if it works out, makes for great form. And, uh, well, we hopefully can get this jackpot because it's only a hundred rand pot. In fact, it's only a four rand jackpot that Darren's worked out and like to take it 25 times. The second leg has gone one and four, so he's, he's very big about Jer Jerusalem, Arain, and, and Kluwe. And then he's bankering the five in the third leg, and that's naturally Golden Hostess in the Diana Stakes. And the last leg is bankering number three, Charles Dickens. So let's hope it all works out. Race number six. This is a progress plate and it's over 1,400 metres. We know already, if you watched race five, that we're going with just two horses here. One, Jerusalem Moraine and number four, Kluwe. Candice Bass Robinson gets Jerusalem Moraine for the first time. This horse was with the Fortune Stable. We remember this horse winning in Gauteng and then obviously went last time out, tried out KwaZulu Natal in the Sales Cup race and run a credible second, beaten two lengths by main defender on that occasion, but had some decent sorts behind it in the form of Outlaw King and a couple of others. Certainly got a serious chance. And number four, Kleklue, is not without a winning claim. Winner of its penultimate start when it beat Monumental. That form saw my golly Molly come and win. And uh, last time out, you would have noticed that uh, Kleklue ran in the company of my golly Molly and was you know, only beaten a short head. The market's indicating in a race like this that what they suggest is the one Jerusalem Moraine at 11 to 10 and number four, Kluklue, is at five to one. So skewed or not, I don't know, Darren, you can tell us, but they're quite big on Jerusalem Moraine here. Uh, Clyde, he's a, a top-class horse. You know, he ran second to main defender when uh, extended in trip to 1,300 metres. Main defender is top, top class. He's grade one placed. Uh, Jerusalem Rain, uh, drawn one. Aldo de Mayer, first run for Candace Bass Robinson. I think he's going to be very, very hard to beat if he's 85% fit. Uh, danger, Chluchlue. I think he's a decent sort. I've only um, covered Jerusalem Rain with Chluchlue in the jackpots, but I do believe Jerusalem Rain very, very hard to beat. Okay. Jerusalem Moraine, hard to beat. That's the latest from Darren Burrows. Let's just take a look at what he's doing. Is a straight up win. That's going to be the form. 
This particular race, this horse has run over 1,400 meters. Jerusalem rain hasn't been 14 before, but it really shouldn't be a problem. The Hollywood Bets Diana Stakes, it's over 1,400 meters. Let's have a look at the field. There's only seven of them that are going to the gate here, but it's going to be a very, very interesting race. We've got Golden Hostess in here, and she obviously a very, very talented horse at the end of the day. I heard Candace Bass Robinson, and whilst this horse was, you know, uh, planned to run last weekend, we heard the post, well, that particular interview, the pre-race interview, and she sounded like this horse was well, and um, must have a serious winning claim. The obvious danger is number three, Cala Moretta. I want to talk to Darren about that because I heard an interview also with Michelle Ricks about that horse, Cala Moretta, and she was quite bullish. She said that Richard Ferry had uh, taken the horse for a, you know, when work riding, etc. And they were quite confident coming into the race. It's been a week since. I'm not sure what's changed. We'll pick up on the the, the, rate, the latest um, track uh, report in terms of um, our. Uh, interviews, our post-race interviews that you would have noticed Vicky does quite often for us. So those are the two. I want to check from a marker just quickly, um, Darren, before I ask you, Golden Hostess 12 to 10, Happy Chance 33 to 10 in the market, and that Keller Moretta's 9 to 2. Are you drawing the line with a favourite? That's me, uh, Clyde. Bank in all bets. I think she's the best bet on the card be besides uh, the others I've spoken about. Um, she's top class, but she doesn't quite see out a mile. So if you look at her last run in the Garden Province, didn't quite find a finish. Her run in the Phillies Guineas, also just the last 50, one paced. Uh, 1,200 meters, have a look. Third in the SA Philly Sprint behind Princess Keller and Desert Miracle. Four runs back, one at 1,200 coming out fresh. 12 to 1,400 meters in this type of company, I think she'll trot up. Um, I really believe of her rating of 117 at level weights with this company, um, surely she's going to get it right. Interesting. Okay, so very big on Golden Hostess. It is over the 1,400 metres, a small field, and Darren Burrows believes that she's above this class and that she'll win number five Golden Hostess. The Hollywood Bets Matchroom Stakes now. It's over 1,400 metres, and this is uh, the race you've all been waiting for. Charles Dickens is back, and, uh, well, we know how super impressive he is, what he's done to date, what he's achieved. Well, he's in a different league, isn't he? Winner of his last uh, two starts. He won both of those races really, really impressively. What's his situation when it comes to uh, Durbanville? Well, he wins comfortably at Durbanville. He turns it on at any given time. Uh, I'm Candace Bass got him ready. Give me a prince, Dean Catamaya. You know, did say that at the end of the day, you've got to start him somewhere. And, um, well, he's starting him in the match, but he's top class. Don't, uh, give me a prince, as we've heard on many occasions, the best sprinter in the country. And it's going to be a very good race to see how this all plays out. I'm interested to see what the pace is going to be all about. And I'll ask Darren Burrows what he thinks as to how this will play. Just in a moment, I just want to have a look at uh, the market just to give you an idea as to what's going on. We only did this on the Friday. And uh, the eighth race market looks like this. Charles Dickens is two to nine. That's number three on the card. Number one, give me a prince is seven to two. And then it's 20 to one bar two. Give me a prince is not going to worry Charles Dickens. Right, Darren? Um, I don't believe so. I think he'll challenge him uh, maybe at the two, three hundred. But um, I just see Charles Dickens oozing class in this type of company. Um, you know, he's he's probably the best horse in the country other than the Philly Princess Keller. And um, I think he's going to sit just off them because after the rain likes to go to the front and dictate. And I see him swooping on by the final two hundred. Um, give me a prince, won't lie down without a fight. He's a top-class sprinter, up to 14, maybe even a mile in time to come. So three to beat one. Well, it's a very interesting race. Now you're seeing two rate high, highly rated horses, one at 130, the other one at 132, that take each other on over here in the Hollywood Vets Matchroom Stakes. And Darren Burrow suggesting a straight-up exacta. Three Charles Dickens ahead of the one, give me a prince.